Welcome back to the Elevate Media Podcast. I'm Chris Anderson, your host. Uh, hang with me today. Deal with a little bit of cold, so that's why I might sound a little bit off more than normal. Uh, so I appreciate you guys' um, uh, lenience and understanding with that. So it's just one of those days in the year. Uh, happens, you know, probably twice a year for me. Getting sinus stuff when the seasons change. Right now recording this in um, 2024 spring. So, yeah, just hang with me. I'll try not to sniff and sniffle too much. Sorry for the editing crew on my team who might have to deal with some of that. So, all right, to start off with it, we're going to dive into how video is evolving. We're going to be discussing how this video content landscape is going to look different in 2024. And it's not a secret that video is continuing to grow and become king on social media. I know some social media platforms are per- pushing um, photos and carousels still, still images, but video is still going to be more popular. It's going to do well. And that is because video helps you build more trust, helps people know you and like you better because it's a person. It's not AI. It's not fake. Uh, and it's the closest thing to being in person and being with someone uh, as you can on social media because you're going to get you're going to get to see their mannerisms. You're going to be able to hear their voice, see uh, and pick up on you know little quirks that they have as a person on video, and you're going to get to listen to them when they're sick, like me. And so it just builds a, a trust there and connection because everyone gets sick, right? Um, but what's interesting with this shift is there's a shift towards more long form content. You know, versus just short form. TikTok, you know, they're opening up the 10-minute video limit there. Probably to compete with YouTube. You've had YouTube has done long form things. So that's starting to shift back to doing more long form. Uh, and so we're going to have to change, you know, how we create the content. Um, because, you know, TikTok was originally the short, uh, you know, quick videos. But with this exploration of longer formats... Uh, and even horizontally, you know, try to compete with YouTube again, we've got to really figure out our content strategy better. So how can you do both short uh, and have it, you know, be attention grabbing, uh, but also have longer, you know, more narrative driven storytelling. And, you know, this is what we've been preaching for a long time is doing a longer form content through video podcasting and breaking those down into shorts. The big thing is you just, again, have to make it Um, compelling enough, attention grabbing enough, you've got to provide enough value. And that's what we try to do here. Obviously, we can always improve. So when you try to balance all these formats, it's going to help you build a deeper connection with your audience and also increase and improve that engagement because they're going to get more value. But then you're going to also have the short form that you're going to be able to put out there uh, to give them a quick, you know, boost of your brand. So that's the first kind of area I wanted to hit on. So you've got to think about your content strategy going forward. How can you incorporate longer form content now on top of the short tw- short form content? So be creative, be you know true to your brand, um, and just try to add value where you can. So the next part, how your branding can be more playful, more engaging, more uh, entertaining. So with that, we're seeing a shift there. Brand personalities are moving more towards playful and meme centric type content, funner content. Uh, you know how things used to be where everything was strictly like, you know, professional, uh, structured, super polished. That's changing to be more relatable, more lighthearted, more real. And I, again, this is why I think live streaming is going to be huge because it's going to be unedited. It's going to be raw and real and people are going to be able to, you know, it's going to be just more like you're having conversation like with them in the room. Uh, because there's going to be less um, polishing of that. So I think it's important to think about that from a video aspect, obviously, because that's what we do. Um, but for example, LinkedIn, uh, you know, they've got anti ans meme strategy, which basically taps into the internet culture, pop culture, while still staying true to their brand identity. So they're meshing kind of like what's trending with their brand. And, and that's that's what it is. You've got to find the right balance between that fun and playful side, but still maintaining authenticity and professionalism. So we've got to walk that line, and we're trying to figure that out too, because we we obviously you know we we value 
what we do at a high professional, high quality level, but we also still want to relate with our audience. So um, we're trying to see how that looks for us. You know, Elevate will probably continue to just show what we do as a team with video production. And then we'll have kind of um, myself and, and maybe one or two others on the team start creating content on their own side that's kind of unique to their personalities to kind of tie in that side of things as well. So she got to be creative with it. But yeah, how can we, you know, engage people through being a little less structured, a little less rigid uh, and have a little bit more fun? Now, the third thing I want to talk about is, you know, how social media, there's a rise of commerce there, right? It's not just about influencing behaviors. You know, TikTok, they are now encouraging that in-app shopping experience, right? TikTok shop. So this is it. Instagram had it a while back. It's gaining traction. And brands now have a unique opportunity to directly engage with consumers and also drive sales through these social channels. It's a really interesting uh, thing to see because it's going to be competing with, you know, things like Etsy and Shopify and things like that. So uh, it's a trend that's here to stay for sure. And brands just, if you have something like that, should explore ways to leverage it, you know, and do it well. Uh, so this is another trend that's going to be growing more going forward in 2024. And in the next one, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more. So we're going to shift gears a little bit, but the SEO side of things and how optimizing your content for, for discoverability is crucial. Social media and these platforms have become a super significant way for people to search things uh, in their own right versus, you know, like Google. You know, users are be able to turn to them for information and inspiration. So being able to be discovered on these platforms is is becoming a even more and more crucial thing, especially as more people join, you know, the game, join the race on social media. So just like you would do it for your website, for search engines, it's crucial that you apply SEO principles to your social content as well. And this could be for me, again, it could be, we talk about this quite often, you probably hear it like beating a dead horse, right? Um, sorry if that offends anyone, not really, whatever, it's just a, a slogan. Anyways, from using, you know, the right keywords and hashtags, because they're still, I think it's still valuable to use for searchability to, you know, your even your captions that now can be searched through, you know, the back end AIs and things like that of what words you use. And even in your video, what what you say in your video can be pulled out now uh, by AI for searching capabilities like YouTube. And, and so all these elements play a role in enhancing your visibility and reach on these platforms. So you've got to think about that as well. Are you using keywords as you're speaking in your videos? And then, you know, the actual text and copy that you're using, do they do they mesh and do they are you using the right ones to help increase your, your reach? And then the fifth thing I wanted to hop on and talk about is the transparency and authenticity. And this is the last one I'm going to kind of go over. So uh, bear with me. Thanks for staying with me even with this uh, cold I'm dealing with. Um, more and more people, they want transparency and authenticity from brands. And this is where we're getting into an interesting time because audiences want transparency and authenticity from brands. But brands, especially smaller ones and big ones, are going to start utilizing AI to create to create content that's not transparent and not authentic because they're going to try to save money. They're try, going to try to cut corners. They're going to try to increase what they're doing through that. So it's going to be re really hard for AI to give transparency and authenticity with these brands because it's not a real person. And you're going to be able to tell that it's not real. So it's going to come off as un yet ungenuine. And so we've got to walk that line with AI and be able to create content from that versus uh, doing true, transparent, and authentic content for these for your, for your brand and business. So before you say, I'm just going to make all AI-generated content because it's easier, faster, saves me money, really think again. Because today, people want more than just a polished marketing message. They want more than an avatar on the screen a fake voiceover. They want to know the people behind the brand and the values they stand for. So if you're doing AI content, I don't, I'm not saying don't do AI content. 
I think there's a place for it. I think there's a purpose for it. I think it can be beneficial. But if you're really trying to build a transparent and authentic brand, that's not going to do it. And that's, again, why I'm saying uh, people who do video content with themselves or their team, actual people, uh, brands who do live streams, they're going to build a better connection going forward in 2024 because of the oversaturation and over-processed content from AI. People are, are going to get tired of not knowing if something is real or not from AI. And so having actual content, being on screen as, you know, your brand ambassador on live stream, you know, providing behind the scenes content, being transparent about your practices and business, you know, that's going to build more trust and loyalty among your audiences. You got to show genuine care and accountability, not just jumping on the AI bandwagon. So don't replace yourself with AI just to make it easier. You can use AI still. You can generate content that way. But don't let it be your sole focus. Don't let it be your flagship content strategy because it's it's going to miss. We're not at the point yet where it is normal. Okay, people still want to people still want to do business with people. In the online landscape, they want to do it with people but online. So you got to bridge that gap. And that's where video content, you know, the talking head, the interviews, the live stream stuff that we help people with, that's what's going to set so many brands apart if they can hop on that and they can focus on that and invest in that side of things. You're going to separate yourself versus those who are trying to save money by doing AI generated content because they don't want to pay for production. They don't want to pay for um, equipment to do their own videos, um, content. So, uh, be, be wary of the AI generated content and using it too much in your content strategy because you're you're gonna not build you're not gonna build bridges that way you're gonna break them down. So I want to hit on some of these trends that are coming for 2024 using uh, utilizing them on social media. Uh, obviously we've seen this digital landscape uh, cons- consistently and constantly change and grow and evolve until it's essential for you as a brand as a business to stay ad- agile and adaptive. So embrace the uh, the change of video, becoming a more playful brand, even thinking about social commerce, the SEO optimization, and then of, tra- of course, transparency. Position yourself for success because it's competitive out there. That's all I have for you today. Uh, if you don't yet follow the show, go ahead and do that. Subscribe. Let us know you like it. Leave us a regular review. really lo- uh, helps us out, keeps us going forward. Um, reach out to me. I'm always open at chris.t.anderson on Instagram. Uh, I'll take any questions there. But until next time, continue to elevate your life, elevate your brand, and we'll talk to you again soon. 